I'm Kay Bess, and this is The Beehive. Women in voiceover, the voices of the fairer sex that keep the wheels of commerce and creativity moving in this country. Voices you hear every day, but names you likely don't know until now. Hey everybody, Happy New Year and welcome to the Beehive and to part two of our end of the year two-part series on reframing failure and hopes and dreams for 2018, otherwise known as resolutions, 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 right? Which, <laughs> oh my goodness, New Year's resolutions. That's loaded, isn't it? I think today I will, uh, I'll start and follow up with um, all the fabulous podcast guests who have been willing to share their hopes and dreams with all of us. So where do I begin? Again, I'm kind of in this Tim Ferriss, I'm sort of absorbing some of his thoughts of late. And um, one of the things he talks about with regard to resolutions is that he doesn't do them anymore. So of course, I was intrigued by that. And what he does instead, which I offer up to you, again, I highly suggest you get his book and uh, subscribe to his email because you'll, then you'll get all these ideas. And when you share them with friends, you'll sound brilliant. <laughs> One of the things that he does rather than do New Year's resolutions is he goes back through his calendar and he looks and he examines all the things that he did that year and whether they were fruitful, whether they were a drag to him, whether they brought him happiness and joy and very logically said, looking forward to the year coming up, I'm not going to do the things, I'm not going to schedule the things anymore that don't fulfill me. And I am going to schedule more of the things that bring me happiness and make me more productive. Uh, so I'm going to start from there this year. I'm going to go through my calendar from last year and see what really worked and take note of the things that didn't work, that I didn't like, that were a drag. And I'm not going to schedule those things. I mean, obviously, we have to do things like go to the doctor for a checkup and get your teeth cleaned, right? Those kinds of things. They ultimately, however, do bring you happiness because uh, good health is all about happiness. So you got to weigh that too, right? But hanging out with people that don't bring you happiness, that's like a no-go for me at, the, at my ripe old age, right? That's just a waste of time. Doing things that don't really fulfill me, it's just kind of a waste of time. So my desire is that there will be less time online and that there will be less time on social media, except for the things that are fruitful, engaging with people in fruitful things, um, letting people know good things that are happening. Um, I like to hear good things from people on social media. That actually brings me joy. So I'm doing away with the politics on social media, which actually I started doing last year anyway. So my social media is much happier than it than it has been <laughs> before I uh, before I let go of all the political yuckiness. But anyway, so that's kind of where I am starting. And then I will say in terms of the the dreams, my desires, those kinds of things, and the very practical aspect of making goals is I love to work. And so the goal is for more work. So how do I achieve more work? Well, there are certain things over which I have no control. I can't control who casts me. I can't control when I'm cast. The only things I can control are my auditions and whether or not they're excellent, whether or not they hit the bullseye, whether or not I'm training, uh, whether or not I'm seeking to get better. Those things I 100% can control. What is the saying that luck is the convergence of preparedness and opportunity? So that's foundational to my desire and my plan for more work. I have to do the legwork and then, in a certain sense, let the chips fall where they may. So how do I start to break that down? Number one, I've got to uh, make sure that I get my auditions in and I get them in on time. Do you hear that, my agents? I'm making a renewed commitment to that. <laughs> and then that I continue to study. I will be taking singing lessons again, which I haven't in a good 20 years, but I'm a singer. There's no reason why I shouldn't be singing. And I'll be taking some workshops with directors that I really want to work with um, so that I can get my 
my face associated with my name associated with my auditions. And I think when we're real people to casting directors, it makes a difference. So that's a piece of my plan. Uh, let's see. I really want to sing more, uh, sing for my own uh, happiness. You know, I was dreaming a little bit last night as I was drifting off to sleep about a time in my life when I had friends around me with whom I played music. And sometimes for a birthday or a holiday, we would find ourselves just sitting around the living room, somebody with a guitar, somebody with a tambourine, somebody with a djembe, and we would sing and play. And it brought me a lot of joy. And I I really want to do that again. So if any of y'all out there want to come over to my house and play music, you just let me know. You know, all of these things play into a happy life, a good life, a joyful life. My desire is to pay attention to my relationships this year, um, in particular, my family relationships, in particular, my daughter, uh, who will be turning 15. And it's a crucial and critical time in her life. And I want to be present with her through such a critical time. And my friendships mean a lot to me. And so I do want to spend more time with my friends, make more plans with my friends, follow up and follow through with plans with friends. I tend to be introverted. So I sometimes, you know, I don't intentionally bail on people, but sometimes I just don't have the energy to go out, right? So I need to figure that piece of it out because I would like very much to continue to honor my friendships and at the same time learn to take care of that introverted part of myself that really does need to be home and needs to kind of hunker down and spend some time in private. So in short, in long, (laughs) those are my goals and my desires. So very concretely, that'll be scheduling the things that bring me joy, scheduling workshops, lessons that make me a better actor, that make me a better singer, that make me a better performer, Um, scheduling workshops that help with my relationships with casting people, um, with directors, uh, with creative people, and then spending more time with my family and my friends, devoting that time to the people that I love. So that's my hope and my dream and my plan for 2018. And now you get to hear from seven or eight more women who are going to tell you their hopes and their dreams for 2018. Happy listening. Sally Safiotti. Hey, everybody, it's Sally Safiotti, and I just wanted to wish you all a happy new year for 2018. I personally am happy to put 2017 behind me. You know, for me, it was kind of a challenging year. But I'm one of those people that at the end of the year, no matter how challenging it was, I become like, you know, fueled with hope, drive, determination for the coming year, no matter what. Um, My eight-year-old really wants me to put out into my goal and dream list for us to get a house that has a yard and a tree house. And I would add to that a cook's kitchen because I love to cook and entertain. So that's up there somewhere. Specifically within my career, I am striving for an animation career, which includes guest stars and series regulars on meaningful and super fun shows with supportive casts and directors. It's something I've been chipping away at for some time, and I will continue to do so. This year, I got to coach with a great animation coach, and I want to continue that and also try some other coaching and also get back to my roots on stage, maybe take a scene study class, or my main goal is to complete my one-person show that I've been talking about for far too long and get it on its feet here in Los Angeles and in New York City. I also plan on reaching out to some contacts from when I used to have an on-camera career and hopefully making some new contacts and booking at least a couple of guest star roles on television shows. All this while also doing my, you know, voiceover for commercials and promos and video games, which I love. As a mother, I hope to keep learning patience and becoming a deeper, more present, more engaged, fun mom than I already am. And I think I'm doing pretty good at that, but I'd like to deepen that even more. And I'd really like to experience some cool, new, fun things with my son to keep strengthening our relationship. And I plan to keep taking action towards my goals and to fit in some more me time and time with friends and more time for self-care, including regular workouts. And as always, my goal is to not sweat the small stuff. 
um, even when it feels like it's really huge stuff. And I also want to keep seeking the attitude of gratitude because when I can actually stop and take a moment and really be here now, I am supremely grateful for everything in my life, for all of you listening, for my old friends, my new friends, my interesting, fun, and incredible career that I am so fortunate to have, and I do work so hard at it. And most importantly, I'm so grateful for my son. I want to wish you all a joyful, adventurous, and fun 2018. I hope we get to meet in person and continue conversations and start new ones and inspire one another because that's what this is all about. Chris Anthony Lansdowne. Well, I said to myself, if I answer this question, I'm going to be real and I'm uh, I'm not going to edit it or um, redo it or retake it a hundred times. I'm going to just answer the question just like it is. And you get the mistakes and all. So here's the real Chris. <laughs> um, so my hopes and dreams for 2018. Well, let me think. I've been really, really fortunate and blessed to have a career in VO for over 30 years. So Oh my gosh, I'm old. Um, I'm really, really grateful for a lot. I got a chance to be Barbie for all those years, which was so fun because kids loved Barbie and I, I had a chance to really talk to them and connect with kids, which is really where my heart is a lot of the time. Um, I mean, all my friends were under 10 for a long time, but that's okay. Also, I'm I'm still a radio host for Adventures in Odyssey, which is a radio drama. It's been going for 30 years and we celebrated 30 year anniversary this month, which is so good because the show really has great acting and good morals to it. And uh, kids listen to it and adults and think, you know, about their choices in life. And it always helps them make good choices. So I'm really grateful and proud of that. What I really hope for 2018 is that I make a difference in people's lives, not it be just about me and my my career and wow, what you do. I, I really want to connect with people and encourage people and talk to people and give hugs and make a difference in, in their lives. And if I can use my VO career to do that in some way, great. I love that. I love what I do. I appreciate everything I do. But for 2018, I'm not going to say I wouldn't like the big gig with, you know, make the big money and all that. Of course, I want all that too, but that's not where my heart is. I want to be healthy and happy and I want my husband and daughter to to be the same. And I want, you know, have a strong spiritual side to my life. I hope I serve God well. And and I, I really feel like this year is going to make a difference for me because it's not going to be all about me this year. Hopefully it's going to be about you. So if you see me, give me a big fat hug and, and, and that's what's going to make me happy. And I hope you don't mind. I just gave you the real, the real Chris. So thanks for, for letting me do that. Melanie Minichino. I have been really blessed in this career and I'm really proud to say that I haven't had to work another job other than voiceover and acting for the past 10 years. And I see that as a really big accomplishment. All us creatives out here actually doing and living our passion is a really small percentage. You know, there's a lot of people doing stuff that they don't want to be doing, and we get to do what we love every day. And I am so thankful and blessed for that. And as I get older and have experienced having a child, a lot of my blocks that I've had have been less and less, but they're still there. I don't know if they'll ever go away completely, but for 2018, my dream and goal is to lessen the brain chatter going on, meaning that that voice in your head that's saying you aren't good enough or there's someone else that's better. I'm not right for this. Are they sure? Did they make a mistake? Because I shouldn't be here because I still have those voices going on. And that does not help me live my life to the fullest. And it blocks from bringing all the special parts of me to the table. And that's actually what brings you ahead, I think, in life is just you being you. And to be able to walk away and not worry if I book the job, but walk away knowing that I brought everything that is me to the table. I didn't have that brain chatter going on. And wow, that was really fun. Period. That's it. I want to do that with everything. That being said, booking more animation would hopefully be the result of that. And um, I've got to experience that in the past couple of years. And that, to me, is the most fun. And I think breaking down those blocks 
would help me be more in the moment with my family, more in the moment with myself, and spending less time on my phone, an addiction, really, that's just taking us farther and farther away from experiencing what it is that's going on around us here in the present. So yeah, I would say for 2018, breaking down those blocks and being more in the now so I can really experience everything. And yeah, of course, more jobs. I mean, right? Doesn't everyone want to be working more? Yeah, I'm not embarrassed to say that. Pfft, more jobs. And also all the, the mushy stuff I said, too. Following the fear. And that's it. Larissa Gallagher. So as I look ahead to 2018, my dream for... I suppose my dream is to try and get better at letting go. I think in so many aspects of my life, whether it's in voiceover or personal with family or relationships or anything, letting go plays such a big part, whether it be auditions with doing something that you really, really want to get. You get that great opportunity, whether it be a national commercial or a series regular in like an animated um, series and putting so much energy into it rather than just playing, rather than just allowing myself to be in the moment and play and enjoy myself and then let it go and be excited that I got the opportunity to play the role once. And if I get the chance to play it, you know, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times again, that'll be amazing. But how lucky am I that I got to play it once? And and I think that applies like in my relationship and just in in kind of personal financial things or family or whatever. I think I think we put a lot of energy into holding on to old beliefs or holding on to old friendships or relationships or wherever you are in your life and or arguments or, or whatever. And I think that is a really important goal for me this year because in 2017, I really started making an effort to do that. And I think it started to pay off. So I want to make that a focus this year and really see how my life unfolds because of it. Roberta Solomon. My dream for my career is to land the gig or gigs that I feel like I've been moving toward all my life. I've done some big work, some really cool work already, but I like to become the voice of a network or a program or a huge project that aligns with my values. All I've ever really wanted to do is tell good stories and to hang around with other people who tell the stories. But I want to reach a lot of people with my voice every time I open the mic because the subtext underneath everything I do, the subtext is life is incredible and human beings are fascinating and this planet is amazing and we're all in this together, right? The challenge, though, is kind of counterintuitive because it seems like the only way that I've ever accomplished anything is when I can let go of the desire to accomplish it. So my actionable goals are continue to study and train, do the best job I can with every script that falls into my hands, treat my clients and my colleagues and my coworkers with respect and kindness and humor and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the people who make it possible. In my personal life, my goal is to be an ambassador for joy. I want to keep my body strong so that my joy radar is in good working order. I want to keep looking for joy because Lord knows it's sometimes kind of hard. This has been, the last year has been such a difficult year on so many levels. So you have to look for joy. I want to, I want to continue doing that and share it with as many people people as possible. I know that sounds kind of Pollyanna, but it's actually sort of a pretty scary thing to do because it means looking for joy in difficult circumstances, and it means saying no to ideas and projects and people that dim my own light or diminish other people, and that can be hard. I want to buy a little house somewhere. 
<laughs> I sold my house. I've been living in an apartment for um, the last several years, and I want to buy a little house someplace where I can make big pots of soup and have all you over, and, you know, we'll hang out and have a slumber party. I don't know where the house is yet, but I'm looking for it. And for my friends and family, I just want everybody to be safe and healthy and happy. Actually, that's my 2018 dream for all beings everywhere. May we all be safe. May we all be healthy. May we all be happy. And may we all be at peace. Melissa Hutchison. And as for 2018, I, again, since it's kind of a daily practice, every year, every month, every day, every moment I can, I, I try to put positive energy into the world, not just for myself, but just manifesting a good place for me and my friends and my family and and my career and just focusing on 2018 being an amazing, peaceful, calm, loving, laughter-filled year. Sissy Jones. I think goals are incredibly important in any job, uh, but particularly in a creative field, because it's very easy to get railroaded into one thing that you're good at. Um, you know, maybe you do commercials, maybe you do video games, maybe you do promos, and it's really easy to get locked into those reads if we're talking voiceover. So for me, I want to continue to work in all areas of voiceover. I love working in commercials. I love working in video games. I love working in animation. I love working in promo. I love working in narration. I want to do more of all. Um, I really have been working hard towards more animation, which is the biggest piece of the pie that I want to pursue in 2018. So I am taking singing lessons. I am working on being a little crazier and letting loose a little more. I'm working with my agent to make sure that uh, what I'm turning in is bookable by his standards. And, uh, you know, I'm also making sure that I meet the people that are making decisions so that they know who I am. And I'm not just another name attached to an MP3, but I'm actually a person that they can quantify the name with. I think it's also important that I not, how do I say this without sounding like completely contradicting everything I've just said, not chasing the next booking, but feeling confident with what I've turned in. It's so easy to get trapped in what do they want? What are they looking for? But who are they, right? I think it's important to know that uh, I'm turning in the best quality product that I can and keeping that feeling, keeping that momentum going always. Because as soon as you start chasing what they want, you're going to lose every time. And I think uh, voiceover is a, is a game of confidence and quality. And so as long as I can marry my confidence and my quality together in my auditions consistently, then I think my goals are going to be that much more easily attainable. I would also add that this has been, I feel, a real turning point for women in a lot of fields uh, towards the end of this year. And so I'm hoping to ride that momentum in 2018. I think there's a lot more room for more female content, for more female voices, for more female presence. And uh, I'm ready for it. Let's do this. Rebecca Davis. So looking ahead to 2018 and my dreams for my career, my personal life, friends, family, and whatnot, um, I'll start with my career because right before recording this, I just finished my vision board. I haven't done one of these in so long, and some friends suggested, let's get together and do this. And I was like, yes, I think this is exactly what I need given the ups and downs of my roller coaster last year. And now when I look at it, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, it fills me with so much joy. And it kind of solidifies what my dreams are. So just to share a few things, right in the middle is uh, uh, some cartoon images of June Ferre and all their images hugging. And it's wonderful. And it says, have a nice day. I've got putting female voices first. I've got a giraffe because suddenly this year, a giraffe has been lifting its head out of the clouds. 
uh, is what it symbolizes for me. Um, there's a lot of vacation and travel on there. I'm a travel junkie, and there's so many places in the world I want to go. So I put down Machu Picchu. I put down a picture of Kauai because it's my happy place. I put down Iceland hiking. I've got all these cartoon images here and video game images and grow, breaking barriers around the world, the power of yes, entertaining. The cast is tremendous. Rise from the ashes. Uh, the future is bright. Risk, optimist, let's go, speaking in foreign tongues, labor of love, no limits, top billing, yet every role matters, exceptional experiences, unicorn, be bold, build your happy place, breathe, mentor, theater, because life's too short for anything else. That's just a taste of what's on there, and I think that really sums up what I want in 2018. And I'm taking my nieces to Disney World, so I want happiness for them. They're young and... I want joy and memories to have with them and adventures with my ninja, really adventures with my husband and, you know, a happy world around me and keep my head above water when things get crappy because they do sometimes. And uh, I just got to get through them. That's obviously what I learned last year in terms of my failure. And uh, if you know me, you know about my obsession with glitter and sparkles. And I just kind of want to keep sharing that with everyone and never grow old. My career this year is animation, video games, the things that I love. And of course, commercial, I, I need to work on that. And I know I'm going to go back to classes and take care of all that and figure out what's blocking me and, you know, where my weaknesses are, where my strengths are. I've been doing this for a long time, but I never stop going to class and expanding uh, my skills. But yeah, that's what I want. And I want happiness. I want to keep the happiness for me and for my friends and my support system and my family and my husband. I just want to keep loving the life that I have. Paula Tisell. Okay, let's do my top three goals for 2018 because I have more than three, but let's do my top three. So my first goal is connection. I am going to connect. I am going to see more people in person. I have a project that I'm working on, and I will be out and about seeing people, and I might even come and see you. Uh, there will be more information about that as the year progresses, but uh, connection, so important. That's number one. Number two, I want to do more promos. I just want to get more promos under my belt. You know, this is a this is a really fun area, and it's also one of those things that you have to keep current because shows change, promos change, styles change. So I have some coaching lined up um, and I'm just going to be hitting it. More promo in 2018. And then my third, my third goal is going to be getting more affiliate TV stations. It's my favorite work. Uh, you know, being part of a team and hearing from people, getting to know people, you know, via email and different TV stations across the country and getting different projects from them on a weekly basis. It's really fun. I enjoy the variety and you never know what to expect. So there it is. Connection, promo and affiliate work. I'm looking at that. Oh, and I want to travel some more. I got some travel in last year, 2017. 2018 more travel. So there you have it, people. And I wish you all the very best in 2018. You know, set your goals and don't be surprised if your career takes you in a different direction because that's what it does. All the best to you. Cheers. There you have it, my dear friends. I want to say to close out this podcast how grateful I am for your listening to this podcast. Um, this is a true labor of love. I don't get paid. I don't have advertisers. I just love my work and the people I work with. And so I'm grateful for the women in voiceover who've been willing to be on this show, those who are coming up in the new year. But really, I'm just so grateful that there are people interested enough to listen. So I wish you the best 2018 through whatever struggles or challenges or achievements and successes that you have. It's all part of the deal. I just wish you the best year. And I look forward to revisiting all of this with you at the end of 2018. So cheers, take care, and happy new year. Oh. <laughs> 
Thanks for joining me today in the Beehive. For podcast notes, pictures, and more information on my guests, visit the podcast website, thebeehivepodcast.com. Find me at my website, kbest.com. Follow me on Twitter at kbest and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you've a mind to, please post a review of the podcast on iTunes. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and good for the bones. Come back for more Women in VoiceOver next time in the Beehive. Let's